Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Golden Opportunities Coaching YouTube channel, which if you're looking for life relationship business coaching, go over there, check that out, or right here on the Pro Wrestling Logic channel where we discuss modern day and wrestling when it was good, back in the uh, free attitude era. Anyway, um, we are discussing the AEW Dark Show for the 13th of April, 2021. Um... Again, this show is too many matches. I say that weekly, and no one seems to care or notice. But it continues to be the same thing week after week. There are talented people on the show, but there's also way too many squash matches, and that's what this remains. However, for the most part, the attempted use of many of the enhancement talent is better than what WWE is doing, so there's that. Uh, SCU... Uh, Christopher Daniels, Frankie Kazarian defeat Jay Lyons and Midas Black. Uh, Lion and Black make their debut on Money. There is no need for them to work two of the YouTube shows in the same week, especially with so many people on roster. Uh, anyway, Kazarian destroys Black with some chops in the corner, and uh, then... They do the formula where Kazarian dominates and uh, Daniels comes in and he looks uh, to be losing the advantage. Lion hits a somersault senton on Daniels through a hoop held by Black. Uh, they're doing a lion tamer circus gimmick, so I guess that's supposed to be some sort of intelligent thing. A lion gets nailed with the best melter ever, hate the name. The win streak is kept alive in three and a half minutes. Matt Seidel defeats Luther in six and a half minutes. There is no reason that someone who's been on WWE TV should be struggling with a guy for six and a half minutes f who's over 50. Just none. Uh, basically, they torture each other by pointing to the third eye deal. Uh, and, of course... Uh, Excalibur is on commentary, which is very unfortunate. He's on mute. Apparently, he makes a third eye blind joke. Um, anyway, Seidel hits a sunset flip early. Uh, Luther's shoulders are down for the three. Ref counts two because, well, that wasn't the plan finish, and we don't pay that close attention. Um, and uh, Seidel gets an interesting cradle cl uh, counter. And then uh, comes back with some kick. Fisherman suplex near fall. They fight on the floor. Luther gets an advantage. Slams to the edge of the barricade. And uh, Matt's brother Mike witnesses all this. And ultimately, we go to me grabbing my phone. And then eventually we continue with Seidel eventually winning. Again, no reason for him to take this long to win this particular match. Dark Order 5 and 10, that makes 15, defeat uh, Kit Sackett and Hayden Backlund in 3 and 3 quarter minutes. 10 gets a submission on Sackett, who I think is making his uh, full uh, debut. Uh, there's a full Nelson slam. Full Nelson makes a comeback. Uh, in 2021 in both brands. Interesting. Dark orders Colt Cabana with negative one. Defeats Jake Manning in just under four and a quarter minutes. Manning is phenomenal and deserves everything he gets. He's really good. Uh, Cabana comes to the ring with negative run and the rest of the gang. Uh, this was recorded for Sammy's vlog. Manning is doing the Boy Scout thing. And... Uh, he is doing, calling himself the Man Scout now on a national promotion, which I find funny. Flying Apple Middle Rock Flash gets Cabana a near fall. Manny makes a short comeback. Cabana wins with a Billy Goat's Curse and a uh, submission. Red Velvet and Big Swole with Kylan King. So apparently we have uh, women's stables now uh, defeating Amber Nova and Queen uh, 
Amida, four minutes. Uh, Velvet and Swell continue to be, I guess, okay tag partners, but completely unnecessary. This is a match that didn't need to happen. Uh, Velvet gets a win with her sh chef's kiss. Kick to Nova, and she's got a match against Jade Cargill today on Wednesday, which hopefully Cargill squashes her in about three minutes, because that's all that Red Velvet really needs. Uh, Post-match Cargill comes out, and uh, she gets speared through the ropes, and there's a brawl, and they're separated by referees. Aaron Solo, whose biggest career accomplishment was being Bailey's ex-boyfriend, defeats Fuego Del Sol in three minutes. A solo finishes with a pedigree variation, and the match didn't need to happen. Gun Club defeats Andrew Palace, Storm, Rockwell, and Mike Magnum in just over three minutes. This match also didn't need to happen. Colton wins with a double underhook into a neckbreaker on Rockwell. Kylan King defeats Matty Rizrowski. Uh, King counters a monkey flick and overpowers Rizrowski. Uh, and then hits the Kingdom Falls to the win. King is improving, but the level of television time they are giving her is not um, commiserate with something that needs to be happening. Continually, Matt Hardy, with the Hardy Family Office, defeats Ken Broadway in just under four minutes. Hardy has a Falls Count Anywhere match Wednesday with Darby Allen for the TV Championship, or the TNT Championship more accurately. If Hardy wins, I think I'm going to cry, uh, but I don't imagine they would do that because Darby Allen's one of the hottest acts they have. Uh... Arvin, Darby Allen is watching from the rafters this whole thing. Uh, Broadway throws money from the top rope before going for Moonsault, which it missed. Uh, Hardy needs two twists of fates and locks in the uh, leech submission hold for the win. Matt Hardy at this age is just sad to watch, especially when he's not in an angle that means anything. Uh, Dark Order's Evil Uno and Stu Grayson, who haven't gotten any better since AEW started, with negative one, defeat Very Morales and Spencer Slade in under 90 seconds. Um, Uno and Grayson are on Dark or Elevation nearly every week, and they are not improving, and they don't have a purpose. Um, they've probably been doing these matches for six weeks. Fatality finisher on Slade. Grayson gets a pin. Britt Baker with Rebel defeats Shauna Reed in two minutes. Uh, Reed starts out with a uh, fast attack on, on Baker. Baker cuts her off with a clothesline. Baker gets rolled up for near fall, trying to taunt her. Eventually locks in the lockjaw getting the win over the debuting Reed. Speaking of more stuff that doesn't need to happen, although Bianca, uh, yeah, be yeah, sure, Britt Baker is probably the best woman they have, so her being on weekly doesn't bother me at all. Multiple times a week is unnecessary. Brian Cage and Ricky Starks with Powerhouse Hobbs and Hook defeat uh, Carly Bravo and Dean Alexander in two and three quarter minutes. Bravo gets sent to the floor. Hook does offense on the outside. Why we haven't seen Hook debut, I do not understand. Hobbs destroys him. Back in the ring, Cage tosses Bravo uh, backwards with a fallaway slam. And Alexander gets power bombed for his trouble, too. Uh, then there's a superplex on Bravo. Starks is setting up. Uh, and, and then tossing the... Um, the talent over to Brian Cage. Cage gets told what to do. Cage hits the drill claw on Bravo to finish this off. Unnecessary, and it appears they're getting along again, which doesn't make sense either. Nyla Rose with Vicky Guerrero. Why is she still here? Defeats Lila Gray in one and three quarter minutes. Guerrero does the excuse me bit 
and chases Justin Roberts away. This is good for business. Um, and then Rose's ring introduction, uh, basically telling her, telling the crowd to applaud. Um, spear and a beast bomb for Rose to get to the, for Nyla Rose to get the win. Um, then we go to Varsity Blondes, one of the better tag teams they have. Uh, Brian Pillman Jr. and Griff Garrison defeat Prince, uh, Kai, and Will all day um, in 3 minutes 49 seconds. Uh, Garrison gets a hot tag, which doesn't make sense. Pillman gets a little bit of heat on him. Garrison hits a rolling elbow on Kai, and then I gotta grab my phone again. And we go back to Lance Archer. Lance Archer, of course, with Jake Roberts, who I really am starting to worry about. His breathing during promos is not sounding good. I have permanent um, throat damage. So my breathing, which people have asked about privately, is there. But um, I, I, I don't know if Jake's got emphysema or what Jake has going on, but he's got something. And it's pretty clear. Uh, Lance Archer, Cole Carter, three minutes. Archer basically jumps his opponent in the middle of the ring. Introductions. Goes right at him. Carter goes for crossbody. And, um, you know, Archer uh, is going to kill you as a chant. And then Archer hits a short iron clothesline tribute to Jake. And then, uh, you know, he has to chase his opponent around. Opponent slides out of choke slams and other things. Runs into a forearm, gets choke slammed anyway. And a spinning Uranagi ur finish is where we go. Then we go to the, I guess, final match. I refuse to call these main events because they're not main events anywhere. And it's only four and a quarter minutes anyway. Dark Order Alec Reynolds uh, with ten. And negative one, so does that mean he's with nine? Uh, defeating Ryan Nemeth with J.D. Drake at 414. Silver joins on commentary. He'll be back in a few months with the shoulder thing. Uh, attack before the bell gets the advantage. Matches sponsored by State Farm. Uh, 12,000 are watching the match at the time. So... That's not particularly good investment for whatever. Uh, Reynolds comes back and gets a cloverleaf on Nemeth, who is gets a rope break. Nemeth comes back with a drop kick and a handstand hammerlock. And then Reynolds escapes, hits a pair of back elbows, gets a drop kick of his own, power bomb and a leg drop, gets Reynolds a near fall. Nemeth comes back with a clothesline, goes for his neck breaker, and Reynolds escapes and uh, hits a Hurricane Uranagi to get the win. Um, not a show worth watching, and it's it's sad because AEW is better generally storyline stuff, but they do too much with too many. Anyway, we'll be back with more right after this. <laughs> 